Okay, guys, we're here today with James Thompson, the JT. That's his nickname. Guys, he's from Australia. He's black belt from Lachlan Giles. And he's the main physical conditioning coach at Absolute MMA in St. Kilda. Oh, yep, that's right. That's correct. In Australia. And uh, guys, now we see like all the Australians coming up and doing very well in Jiu-Jitsu. So James is one of the people who's helping like with physical conditioning and that kind of stuff. So he has a system for prehab, rehab, and also physical, physical conditioning for Jiu-Jitsu athletes. And it's very cool because his system works for the hobby people and for the athletes as well. So he's gonna explain to us a little better about that. And uh, the, his instructional, it's all, it's already on bjjfanatics.com, so make sure to check that out. It's called the Bulletproof. And uh, can you explain a little more about that? Uh, yes, James? definitely. Thank you, Bernardo, we appreciate being here. Also, I have to give a shout out to my partner in crime, Joey from Sydney. So he's the, the, the better looking, more charismatic half of Bulletproof <laughs> for BJJ. And uh, yeah, so thanks for such a nice introduction. That's right, I'm out of absolute MMA in St. Kilda. And uh, what I do is I, I do my best to keep people injury free. So what we do with Bulletproof for BJJ is not only do we help people get stronger, but it's very hard to be strong when you're injured, guys. And we, we all know being in jiu-jitsu, when you train a lot, you get injuries. And the first thing that your, your therapist is going to say to you is, don't train. And we know what that is. We're all going to train, guys. So we have to find a way to work around. I mean, definitely, if you're injured, we got to get you back on the mats as fast as you can. So the thing I'm going to do today, guys, I'm going to show you the three best things you can do before you start training to get your body, your body ready for jiu-jitsu. And then the next thing after that is the two best moves you can do after training to make sure you're less sore and you bounce back quicker for training. That's awesome. Guys, okay, so yeah, another two things here. So one, James spent like, how long have you stayed in Brazil, James? Oh man, I've been to Brazil like four times and um, all up it was almost like a bit more than one year. Yeah, so I remember when I was living in Sao Paulo, James was there and he was, as soon as people saw how good he was in physical condition, everybody was catching him. So I remember like Michael Lange, Tarsis Humphries, Fabio Calai. Fabio Calai, yeah, yeah. Who else? Oh man, I was working with all the guys, Thomas Ian. Tom, Thomas, Tom Lisboa. Here, Thomas Lisboa. Yeah. So that's very cool. And guys, uh, when James was saying like uh, how he tries, uh, how when you get hurt, the doctor tells us, uh, oh, just don't train jiu-jitsu. That, that's a very simple answer, right? So in my case, for example, my brother is a knee orthopedist. Mm. And uh, in the beginning, that's exactly what he would say. Oh, just don't train. And then year by year, he was understanding better and better and better that I could not not train. I had to train. So I think it's completely different when we work with someone that understands that. That understands that you, 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 you cannot just not train you, you gotta train so and, how do we do that so, and to be honest guys if you look at the, the change now is it's not do nothing it's do something that will help you improve not go backwards sure. so you you never do nothing you can always do one small thing that's going to help you get better so if you need knee surgery and you can't use your knee that's fine work on your posture yeah. or work on your good leg doing nothing is actually not going to solve the problem so what we have done with Bulletproof for BJJ is given a, a system, an approach, so you can improve your mobility, so you're not as stiff as a board. And the second one is how do you strengthen up your weaknesses so you can be more well-rounded and get more time on the mat. So that's what we focused on. So let's do it, James. Let's. So you want to demonstrate the moves first and then I try to do? Okay, so um, step number one, guys, we're gonna do our, our, our number one preparation move, getting you ready is first of all, we call this active pigeon. So just looking at the position guys, from here, I'm putting my hands evenly like a push up. Then I'm bringing my foot in between, evenly in between. Now, the pigeon position typically, which is done in yoga, gets you down and just resting in this position. Now this is preparation guys, this is mobility. So from here, I'm actively drawing my knee down towards the mat and then coming up. Let's see, so we're just putting the outside of our foot there, if we can. <laughs> Keeping our back knee up and dropping down. Yes, now keep your back knee off the mat if possible. So I'm just gonna draw my knee down to the mat, back stays nice and straight. Just like this, I'm gonna aim to get 10 repetitions, just like that. Chest up, back knee off the mat. Now, I don't want you to collapse, 
I don't want you to fall down like that. So if I just show you here on Bernardo, I don't want you guys to come to rest. I don't want you to like stop. That's not what we're looking for. Coming back up. The key thing is to stay active here, keeping back knee up and drawing the outside of the knee down to the mat. Only as far as you can with no knee pain. As long as you have no knee pain, we're getting a really good stretch here in the hip. And we're doing that actively, pushing the knee down, drawing back up. I want you guys to work through, and we're looking at about 10 repetitions on each side there, guys. Very good. Now, just coming back from that. The next step on this, guys, in terms of preparing your ankles, knees, and hips, whether you're a spider guard player or you're a hardcore wrestler, we need good range in the ankles, knees, and the hips. So we're going to do a movement. This is movement number two called the Cossack. So from here, I take my feet to about double shoulder width. From here, I turn my knees out, my toes out slightly. I'm shifting my weight down to the side, and then I'm letting my toe come up. But here's the key thing, guys. Yeah, you only go as long as you control. Now watch, as we do this, we're going to shift to the other side. We're going to alternate. I want you to keep your heel on the mat. So only go as low as you can keep your heel. A lot of people when they do this, the common mistake is they come down, come down for another, and the heel comes up. They go like this, because like, oh look, I can get lower. That's not what we're looking for. We're trying to improve the ankle range of motion, so we keep the heel down, making sure the knee is going over the toe, super key. Leg is moving straight, sinking down as low as we can, trying to get that knee over the toe. This is gonna help improve your wrestling shot, and also improve your adductor flexibility. Just working through there. How's that, Bernardo? <laughs> very good, Urgent. Yeah. Oh, Getting that Jean Claude Van Damme flexibility. <laughs> all right. Now, last but not least, number three. Now, for all of you Juju Terrors out there, whether you're playing guard or you're wrestling, or let's just say you've been on the computer all day, we're going to open up the chest, open up the shoulders. So, we call this movement number three. Sideline rotation. So just have a look, I'll demonstrate first. This is kind of level one, this is the easiest version. So I'm turning down on my side with my two knees together. My opposite hand, so it's my right leg, my left hand. From here, I make a fist. I'm gonna put the knuckle of my index finger on the ground. From here, I'm drawing a big circle all the way out, all the way down. Now, from here, I come back. So each time when I'm doing this, I'm keeping the back of my knuckles to the ground. Now, if this is too easy, and you're feeling like there's not much stretch here through your chest, we're going to step it up. So then from here, same position, we straighten our bottom leg, boom, and now we roll the knee all the way to the ground. So starting position, knuckle on the ground, and coming out. Now. Key detail, guys. When we are here, I want you to draw down in your lap. So suck your arm down in the shoulder blade, and then, oh, this is how you tap Bernardo Freer. I didn't think it was possible. <laughs> shoulder mobility. So just from here. Yeah, you can feel a big stretch, right? Yes. But we're gonna be a little bit stricter than that. I'm kind of being nice, because obviously Bernardo's in the champ. I don't wanna be too mean to him. But look, don't let the knee come off the ground. The knee must stay down. From here, as we take the arm back, at this position here, stop for one second. Hold this position, don't move. From here, Bernardo, I want you to pull down in your shoulder blade, like pack your shoulder down, yes. Now, only go as wide, guys. No, 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 don't let that knee come off. Ah. Only go as wide as you can handle and then come back. If you can't go any further, that's okay. But it's really important that when we go here, so we don't get any impingement in the shoulder, I want you guys to draw down in your lap. And this will enable you to get that little bit more range. Each time, slowly building up your range of motion. So with each of these movements, guys, I want you to repeat actively for 10 repetitions. And Breathing James, out. This is before the class. This is pre-class, guys. So it's not static stretching. This is getting you warmed up, getting you prepared. And then each time, you notice that we're just getting that little bit more range of motion, a little bit more. His shoulder's moving a little bit more. We'll do one more. So for all you office workers out there or for any of you hardcore guard players, this is going to help you out. All right. Man, that's awesome, James. No worries. That's awesome. So you, you, you would suggest people doing the, 
this exercise before the class and yes. how long it takes it might take like three minutes three minutes maximum okay. so the way we encourage people to do this is to do one set of each movement and then repeat it as many times as you can okay let's say you only get to it once or twice that's fine okay. but you know we hope that people are coming to class at least 10 minutes early okay. you can still talk with your friends you can still socialize but encourage them to do the same okay, instead of just doing the <laughs> <laughs> don't get me wrong that's okay but like what we're trying to do is not only like stretch and disengage the tight muscles but we're trying to engage the right muscles okay. right so that's the purpose of the mobility work okay. now step two we finished class we just rolled to the death Bernardo tapped me 20 times I gotta make sure I iron out the kinks. So the two biggest problems with jujitsu is, is, is the tight shoulders, hunchback, and the tight hip flexors. It doesn't matter if you play guard or you're a judo player, you pass guard, we're tight here, we're tight here. So the next two movements I'm gonna show you are perfect for remedying that. Now the number one, this is the number one stretch we put for, for um, all jujitsu players is the kneeling wall stretch. So just have a look at this, guys. I'll do it first, and then I'm gonna get you to do it. Okay. So the setup when I do this, level one is I'm actually gonna put my toe against the wall. And so there is a little bit of space. If you look, there's a little bit of space between my knee and the wall. This is level one. So for those of you who are not familiar, I'll get you to do it in this way. You notice that my heel is behind my butt. And then from here, I'm bracing my abs and I'm coming up straight. So if we can push your hip back towards your, yeah, here. Now, just keeping your back straight. Can you put your other hand on, the, on your knee, Bernardo? Uh, so two hands on your knee. And then just pushing your back. Oh, look, look at that face. That's the look of love. Now you're gonna do the work. So from here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tense my hip, squeeze my glute and push my hip forward. Common mistake, I'll just show you now. So the common mistake here, guys, is that people will just push their hip away from their leg. So just let your hip come forward and rock back. Now that's good, like you're gonna feel a little bit of stretch, but that's not what we're doing. Instead of letting our hip come forward like this, we want our hip bone to tuck under. So keeping the back nice and straight. Now, I'm gonna get you to tip your hip bone under. Yes, yes, squeeze your good. Tighten up that ass. Oof. Now, I want you to draw down. Be tight in your abs. Tip your hip under. A little bit more. No, no, no. Head up. Oh, yeah. Ease up from that. Now, I'm just going to show you level two. So, when you get a little bit more advanced, guys, just have a look at this. I'm going to put my knee all the way. I'm pointing my toe. Now, from here, keeping my back straight. It's really important here. I'm, I'm not arching to touch my head back, but from here... If you look, I'm going to tuck my pelvis under. You see? I'm not leaning forward and dropping my hip. I'm coming up. I brace my abs, squeeze my glute. Now, what I'm going to get you guys to do is pulse. This is the difference. We're not just hanging out. I'm going to squeeze my glute. Relax. Squeeze. Relax. Squeeze each time. A little bit more. Squeeze. Just getting a little bit more range. I'm doing 10 pulses. And then on the last one, I'm going to hold. Oof, tuck those hips under. It's uncomfortable. I think I'm sweating more than before yeah, when we were training. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ease down. All right. So we're just going to do one side for that. But I'd like you guys to do both sides. So what I was saying about pulsing, it's really important. If we want your hip flexor to open, we have to engage your glutes. So it's really important that you're not just leaning in and, and shoving the muscle. You're actually... Engaging these so these open up and we actually get that full pelvic tilt. Cool. So that's, that's key for opening up in the hip. Everyone in Jiu-Jitsu should be doing it. The second one is the scorpion stretch. Now, you've probably seen variations of this, but we have a particular way that we like to do it. So I'm going to get you to just have a closer look at this. So just to start off, you can use a line in the mat. My chest is in line with the line. Now from here... I'm gonna put my arm directly in line. My other hand is in close, kind of like a push-up. From here, I'm gonna bring my arm about 15 degrees, just up a little, just above that shoulder height. Now from here, I keep my chest 
and the side of my face in contact with the ground. I'm gonna push through this hand. I'm actually gonna, this one. I'm gonna point my opposite foot. So I'm stretching my right arm. I'm gonna point my left foot. I'm gonna point it down long and sweep it around as far as I can go. I go as far as I can. Now once I'm here, I'm gonna just come back slowly. Then I go again, slowly out. Try and go a little bit further, push and come back. I'm not actually, I'm, I'll help you with this banana. Yep. So one second, we're just gonna adjust slightly. Have a look here, small detail. We wanna have this up about 15 degrees there. I'm gonna get you to adjust your hip to your right a little bit more. So move over a little bit more, a little bit more. Hip, hip, hip. Yes. Now we wanna think, point these toes. We sweep our leg long, 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 long hip, long hip, long hip. Sweep as wide as you can. Until you can't, bit restricted. Now, soften your knee. Little bit, little bit, yeah, coming back. Just touching here. Now, once you're there, just relax a little, coming back. And then again, go through there, a little bit more. And then coming back. So staying active with it, guys. We just work that a little bit more each time. And what I want you to do also, a small detail, push through this hand, like you're doing your push-up on this side. Keep strong contact with your chest here, and then pushing through your hand there. Go a little bit further, but now we just do two more. Reaching over a little bit further, stretch your leg a bit wider, a bit wider. And we do one more. Coming all the way over, all the way over. Now once you're here, guys, I want you to breathe and what we're doing is we're actively pushing to that far arm. There it is. You can't see Bernardo's face, but it's much more like Yeah. <laughs> Which means you're in about the right spot. Yes. But the important thing is you have to be able to maintain your breath. If you can't keep control of your breath, you're gone too far. So we might just back it off a little bit. All right, that's it. Now I'm just gonna show you variation two here. So we'll give Bernardo a break. It's really important that if with any of these stretches, you're getting joint pain, we don't want that. We're not trying to strain ligaments. We're not trying to like injure you. If you've got joint pain, you need to consult a physician or a physical therapist to better understand what's going on. Because if you don't know what's wrong with your car and it keeps getting smoke out <laughs> the front of the car, you need to take it to the mechanic guys. But what we're looking at is if you have a certain amount of discomfort in the muscle, it's not, a, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's the classic thing in jujitsu. we just ignore it. But guys, we've got to pay attention to it because otherwise it's going to turn to injury, which could keep you off the mats for a long time, which is not what we want. But here's level two, guys. I'm going to put my arm at 90 degrees. So just by bending the elbow in this way, this makes it a lot more concentrated in the shoulder. Now, the other thing I'm going to do when I, when I turn here, I'm going to point my toe and I'm going to keep my leg as straight as I can for as long as I can. Oh, that's pretty tough. Now I soften the knee. But the whole time, I'm pushing my chest actively into the ground. I'm actively pushing through my hand. And then just ease. Little pulse, ease. Each time I'm going that little bit more, little bit more, up until I've hit my end range of motion. <sighs> Ten deep breaths and allow yourself to fully relax into the stretch. As you can see, guys, I'm sweating. I don't know about you, yeah, Bernardo. Oh, well, so is it kind of <laughs> The body's warm. So people always say, I don't have time for this. You definitely do. There's always five minutes at the end of the class. Okay. There's always 10 minutes at the start. What I encourage you to do is what we do with Bulletproof for BJJ is take that time to not only talk with your friends, but prepare your body for going rally driving, and then also make sure you do that maintenance so you can get back on the mats as soon as possible. Okay, good. So, okay, so just to understand, so the first moves we did, we do before the class, and yes. those last moves we do after the class. Yes. And then in the instructional video you have, then there's way more moves that we can use before or after the class, and also as a physical condition. Definitely, so, so um, within uh, Bulletproof of BJJ Volume 1, we have two discs dedicated to people who can use and access uh, gym facilities. Uh, we have one full disc dedicated to all this mobility work that you can do before and after class. And then we have another disc for those of you who are training at home 
or if you just have access to uh, your jujitsu mats and nothing else, you can still get stronger and get more mobile. Right. So you can have an access to over 60 routines relevant to these movements. And then we've got over 145 ways for you to get stronger. Yeah, so guys, that's awesome. I remember when I was living in Sao Paulo, that time we were visiting, yeah. I had a mat in the living room, yeah. and that's where I used to do physical conditioning. Yeah, but now that's crazy, so, man. Like, I remember going to the apartment, and uh, everyone's like, oh, Bernardo's doing kettlebells, he's doing all this training. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, Bernardo, I'll just get you to hold your arm up. He's like, oh, I can't straighten my arm. I think I tore my bicep. I still him up. <laughs> <laughs> and he was still training, and he was still destroying everybody in the gym. No, it was uh, an amazing time. time. Yeah, but thanks so much, James. Appreciate it. Thanks for that. Uh, guys, so uh, he, all his instructional about the bulletproof for BJJ is on bjfanatics.com. And as he said, there's like routines for workout that you can do in the gym, that you can do at home, that you can do on the mat. So it's, it's very, very cool. And uh, he's from Australia. And now you're seeing like all these Australians doing very well. So he's probably like a big help of that for the Australians to come up stronger and stronger. Thanks so much, James. Appreciate Thanks so it. Much. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.